A lot has happened with the iOS music making platform these past 10 years, and we're losing something in that process, and I'm not so sure I like it. Don't get me wrong, I like the fact that it's very very easy to build intricate setups in something like AUM, which I use on a daily basis. And I build these intricate setups, I do these things where I add graphical elements with apps and I mix so many apps together and it's all thanks to the AUV3 format. But like I said, we are losing something in the process because if we have a look back a decade or more, then we find apps and app developers that looked at this platform and thought to themselves, how can I utilize the touchscreen based interface? And then these developers responded with apps, beautiful, innovative apps that did things in a way that no other app had done before. And they were meant for making music with with a touch-based interface. Now, even though we haven't seen many more of these types of instruments coming out the past decade, there has still been a few new ones. And the old ones are still here, still being updated, still being worked on. to nurture these apps. We need to support these apps. We do not want to see apps like this disappear because these apps provide the user with a unique interface that they can use to be creative with. It's a unique experience and it allows the user to think about music in different ways. It's like learning a new language. Whenever you do that, you are creating new pathways in your brain and you're teaching yourself how to think differently. And that leads to increased creativity. And I can only speak for myself really, but what these apps did for me was change the way I think about music and how I'm being creative. And quite frankly, I want that for you too. Now, I don't really subscribe to the concept of sin, but if I accept the concept for my next argument, then the worst kind of sin to me is the one where there is this thing you can imagine yourself using because it looks amazing, sounds amazing. It seems to do what you want it to do, but you won't even try it out just because it doesn't have this one insert whatever tech acronym here. Look, it's not like I don't get it. I also have a workflow and I need certain tools to do certain things in certain ways. But it is when I step out of my comfort zone that I get the most creative. So I urge you, please don't click off this video just because I'm about to show you a bunch of amazing, awesome, creative apps that do not support AUV3. A lot of these apps, however, do support another type of tech that will allow you to record the output. And many times that's all you need. And with that, I want to welcome you to the 10th year of the Hack Attack show on YouTube. 10 year anniversary, it's been an amazing ride and it wouldn't have been possible without people like yourself. Now, I also want to give a huge shout out to all of my patrons. Thank you for sticking with me for this long and thank you for believing in me. And to my Discord channel members, you're awesome too. Thank you so much for the help with this video. That's right, people in my Discord group helped me with the apps and some of the discussions we were having around these apps on this list. So if you want to be part of that discussion for future videos, then you should join up on my Discord channel. You have a link down below. My name is Jakob Hack. I'm your host. You're watching Hack Attack. Let's roll. The first app out is going to have to be Borderlands Granular by Chris Carlson. Now this is an app that made me absolutely lose my sh** back in the day when I first found it. This app came out back in 2012 and it's still here, it's still being worked on, and it's an amazing example of how good a touch-based instrument can be.
Now, as the name suggests, this is a granular app. So granular synth sampler, I mean, you can't really pry them apart. These two concepts are kind of intermingled when it comes to granular because it's kind of like micro sampling and playback. And the thing is, often I do not even use the granular aspect of it. I might do sometimes to create noises and sounds and stuff, but most of the time I use it to do micro sampling. Now, one awesome feature that Borderlands Granular has is the ability to sample through audio layers. So if you place one, two, three, four, five, six wave files on top of each other and you move a node over it, it will sample from all of them. That's pretty neat, isn't it? And since this is based off samples, then you can put anything in here. It can be forest sounds, city sounds, it could be you, sharting. The thing is, it can be anything. And so you just put the WAV file in there, you double tap somewhere and you add a node. And then you just take that node and you drag it on top of your shard. There is nothing quite like this app out there. Number one, it's beautiful. Number two, it's got a fluid interface. And what's so cool about this is that you can live sample stuff and play it up with these notes. Now, I'm only guessing here, but I think that most people who have ever come across Borderlands Granular or tried Borderlands Granular think about Borderlands Granular as this weird sound making thing. But me, I have a few ways of thinking about this. And one of the ways is, well, it is a weird groove box. In 2020, Chris Carlson put out an update. And in that update, he added a bunch of new tools and features for the nodes. And one of those features was the ability to actually sync the playback rate of the notes. Now, if you're following me on Instagram, you've already seen a video in where I've got this pretty awesome piece of music made in Borderlands Granular. And it's basically like this trans house kind of thing. And some people asked, how did you do that? Well, now you know, I was using the syncing feature. And for the one person who emailed me and asked me to make a tutorial about it, well, I've already done that tutorial back in 2020, back when this update came out for Borderlands Granular. Seriously, go watch that video. I talk all about this syncing stuff and how to use it. And in it, you can also hear Chris Carlson himself talk about the development of Borderlands Granular. In this talk that I, that I sometimes give, I have a slide that, that says the app was born of naive optimism and lack of skill. So you can use Borderlands Granular as a weird sample playback machine, as a granular device. You can use it to make Groovebox-like stuff. You can use it for making ambient soundscapes. And what else? Well, if you set the notes up right, we are the Borg. 
you will be assimilated. Daddy, daddy, boo boo. Stick your head in dirt. Now, I do understand that most of you watching this have heard about Borderlands Granular before, but. I also know at the same time that there are some of you who just haven't opted in for this app simply because it doesn't support a UV3. And if that's you, stop, stop it. it. Get, Get some help. help. Get the app now. If you need to connect it to something else because you want some effects on there, you can always use the interapp audio protocol and connect it to something like AUM. However, in case you do really need everything to be a UV3, maybe you should just have a look at something like Spacecraft Granular Synth or Flus Granular Playground. Both of these apps are granular type apps, but they're very different from Borderlands Granular. And not only that, they are very different from one another. You're only going to get a surface glance at these apps from me. But what I want to do is highlight what makes them both so special because they both have something that Borderlands Granular does not really have. Starting with Spacecraft Granular Synth, the biggest limitation here is that you can only load two samples at any given time, way less than what you can load with Borderlands Granular, where you almost have an infinite amount of samples you can have on screen. And you can't really sample through a bunch of samples, but Spacecraft has something Borderlands doesn't, and that is a note sequencer. So it was designed with a different workflow in mind. It syncs to a host, it can sequence notes, and that is very, very awesome. Now, if we look at Flus Granular Playground, then this one can only load one sample at any given time, which makes it very limited. But then again, you're working with an AUV3 plugin. So yeah, you can load multiple instances. Now, if we have a look at what makes it special, it is the way that it handles modulation. Now, the way you do it is by interacting with these elements here. So if you want to modulate these sliders or these balls, you drag them and release them and they will bounce around. And in the case of the sliders, you can even set up ranges for them. Yeah, I love working with this. And right now I don't have any inertia on, but I always have at least some inertia on there. And look what happens when I increase it things will slow down over time, which makes this into an instrument because you have to keep interacting with it, keep controlling it. I just love this stuff. So when we talk about multi-touch gesture instruments, we're talking about stuff like this. If I show you some screenshots, I'm putting many fingers down and I'm not just playing them like a keyboard, even though you can in many cases. No, I'm just putting my fingers down. I'm holding them, sometimes tapping them. I'm doing pinching and de-pinching motions. I'm twisting them, moving them around. And I'm doing this to control everything from filters to melodies and even rhythms. <laughs> And when it comes to these types of instruments, there are three specific instruments I'm thinking about that really encapsulates this entire concept. 
And those are Gesturement, TC11, and Touchscaper. And we're gonna start by having a look at TC11. Right, so if we have a look at the engine of TC11, it is 100% synthesizer based. So if you're into synthesis, then you're gonna have lots of fun with this one. And if you're into touch instruments, then you can't go wrong with TC11. Let me just warn you, there is a huge drawback in here, and that is there is so much that you can do. It is very modular, and that modularity includes all the touch features of your device, so it takes time to build your own. But then again, you might not have to because it comes with a bunch of presets. Now, as a performance app, TC11 is great, especially if you're using some sort of video output mode to project or show the screen somehow, because it looks really good. Everything in here has a graphical element to it. It has various uh, color schemes you can use, and you can even combine surfaces because the entire synth is multi-timbral. So you can have two surfaces right next to each other or three other surfaces, four. Yeah, it's really cool. And when you mix them and they look graphically different, it's a winning concept. <laughs> It's an app you do not want to miss out on, even though it doesn't have AUV3. I mean, look at it. It should be used as a standalone app anyway. And if you do need it to go through some other effect apps in the background, you can still use the inter-app audio feature that it does support. Now, in 2012, we got an app called Gesturement. And they kept working on this formula. And then later on in 2018, we got Gesturement Pro, which is the app that we are actually gonna have a look at now. Now this one is different from TC11. Well, they look kind of similar. You're interacting with them with several fingers at once. You're doing gesture-based movements. You're dragging stuff up and down, twisting things around, things like that. You can even tap stuff in here. But Gesturement is kind of a rhythm-based instrument. Let me show you. I'm gonna open up the settings for one of the instruments by long pressing on the instrument tab here. And when we do that, we get these things here in our playable area. As you can see, there are set rates along these lines. And if I demonstrate what happens when I'm playing here, you'll be able to discern what it does. This is basically like using divisions for the same clock or triggering sequence. And I really like this because this allows you to set up specific rates for all of the instruments. So with Gesturement, you're always locked into a tempo, but that makes it interesting because now you can sync with whatever you wanna play with. Then on top of that, it also has MIDI output.
this instance here, I'm using Gesturement to control Chiang Mai inside AUM. And I do this quite often because Gesturement does not offer you a fully-fledged synthesizer like TC11 does. So you're kind of limited in the sounds that you have at your disposal. There's basically this list of rompler-based instruments, and you have everything from drums to orchestral instruments to synth instruments, pianos, things like that, keyboard stuff. But yeah, I feel limited very often, even though there are some really good instruments in here. It's a very cool instrument, and I highly recommend it. Now, it doesn't support AUV3, but it does support interrupt audio, so if you do want to run the sound coming out of Gesturement and record it and process it, you can do that. Now, the next app we're going to look at is Touchscaper, and <laughs> this thing looks like a mix of TC11 and Gesturement, and it kind of works like a mix of those, but this one is also very much rhythm-based, so much so that it actually has a chord sequencer in here. You can have notes being strummed by dragging inside this field here. You can move stuff around. You can twist stuff. You can mix it with different sounds. You have a bunch of instruments to choose from. This one is super awesome. So playing Touchscaper is actually very straightforward once you have a setup going because in the middle field here we have the playing area and here you can play the lower octaves towards the middle and then as you move away from the middle you get to the higher octaves. If you press and hold down your notes and you drag them out towards the side you get an extra sound on top of it like a string or whatever you might have chosen and you can also pan it left or right and then here on the left side you have all of the chords that you selected and you can switch these on a fly which is really nice when you're playing the middle area and then you have the strummer on the right as you've seen you just drag your finger up and down and it will strum through the notes The biggest drawback of the app is you have to spend a lot of time building your own surface. And because of how the app looks and how flat it is, yeah, I know all the other apps are flat, but here you do work a lot in the menus when you're doing your own surfaces and chord progressions. And the flatness of it, this one cyan color over black, ends up feeling as if you're working with an Excel spreadsheet. And that's not too much fun. In the end, you'll suffer through it, as I did, because the app is incredible incredibly fun to play with. Now, there's a second thing that annoys me, and that is that sometimes when I'm setting stuff up in here and I'm working from within these pop-up menus, I end up dragging them around when I'm trying to test out my surface and playing stuff in the background because I'm dragging my fingers. Suddenly, one of these pop-ups will stick to my fingers and follow the fingers around. That can be annoying, so you have to move them out of the way and stuff like that, but yeah. In the end, it is worth it. In fact, all of these instruments are worth it. If you are into these types of instruments, you do not want to miss out on any of them because they all offer something very unique. Go get them. Oh, and before I forget, of course, Touch Scraper does not support a UV3, but it does support interrupt audio. So what are screenboard apps? Well, screenboard apps are apps that open up and turn your entire screen into a keyboard-like instrument. And then through gestures, you can get more expressive with the playing. And to start out, I'm gonna show you Thumb Jam, which is a very old app because it was made all the way back here. And it's one of the first that really allowed you to use the screen as an instrument. Now, 
Now this one is completely sample based and you're kind of limited in the amount of instruments that you get to play around with. Now you can make more by downloading samples from a library that you can access from within the app. And you can record samples from the built-in microphone on your iDevice or use the sound interface connected to the iDevice for higher quality samples. <laughs> Stop it. Get some help. Now, the app also allows you to loop whatever you're playing and play along with that. And you can start recording a loop by just pressing the record button up here and you play around for as long as you want. And then you just stop it and you get a loop instantly playing. And you can access controls for the looping over here where you can also save stuff down and do mix downs and things like that. What I really like about Thumb Jam is that it's kind of simple. It sounds bad, but it's not. It's a strength in this case because I use it for generative music. How? Well, I make sure that I record all of my loops in different lengths. And that makes it so that when you play them, they will offset and over time it just sounds generative. They never really sync up. You don't get that four on the floor feeling. And on top of that, this is going to sound like a weird segue, but it's not we have limited controls over how we can edit our samples. I mean, it basically boils down to just adding a little bit of attack time and release time to a sample, and that's not much, but that might be just all you need. So you use long attack times, long release times, and this ends up becoming a very quick workflow. And since we cannot edit our samples much, the material we put in it becomes more important. So you do some more work on that. And then you just take all of these simple basic tools and you can get a generative session going. Lastly, just top it all off with a big fat juicy reverb. Now, I am no Jordan Rudas, but I'm very happy that Jordan Rudas loves iOS because he really does. He's released a multitude of apps together with a bunch of different developers over the years. And one of the apps that he put out was GeoShred. So at first glance, it looks like a screenboard app made for people who just want to play an awesome instrument on a touch screen. However, if you're into sound design and synthesis and also touch based instruments, then all the instruments in here, they're not just Rompler based. No, there's an actual engine in here. So the instruments are physically modeled. There is actual synthesis going on in here. <laughs> To open up all of those settings, we go to the upper right corner to the three little dots and open up that menu. 
Then we go down to this menu item. And now when we press that, we have a new interface at the top of the screen. Now in this interface, we can do settings for the performance, meaning how the screen interaction is working with the instrument and a bunch of other things. There is even an expert mode. And yeah, there's expert modes for the instruments, which is in this case, a guitar. And if we scroll further, we can see a wide range of effect pedals where we can do changes in also. And so, yeah, it gets very, very deep once you start really digging into all of the functionality that GeoShred provides the user with. So you can make some really crazy sounds. So when it comes to GeoShred, the things I like the most aren't the cool sounding guitars. I mean, it makes sense to play sounds like that in an app made this way. It was probably designed for that from the beginning. I mean, it looks like a string interface anyway. However, it's the strange stuff that can be made with GeoShred that I like it so much for and is actually the reason to why I'm recommending it. Now, GeoShred is one of those apps that does everything right when it comes to touch interface instruments. So yeah, it's a proper screenboard app. And if you've got a serious case of screenboardism, just like Jordan Ruder's, then you need to get this app now. Now there is a drawback in the app and it's super annoying, at least to me. And it's the way that there are presets available in the preset list that rely on instruments that doesn't come bundled with the app. And so you'll sit there, go through presets, and then suddenly you're hit with pop-up after pop-up after pop-up. These pop-ups will tell you to go to the app store and buy a certain instrument because you need that in order to play the preset. And that's super annoying. It's very disruptive. And I wish there was a way to filter all of those presets out so that they're not in the bundled factory preset list. Now, I do want to make it absolutely clear that I don't have a problem with paying for things that give me value. And in this case, it's great sounding physically modeled instruments with a great interface. So I don't have a problem with that at all. And you don't have to take my word for it. You can go and check the demos for these instruments on YouTube. You'll see and hear for yourself what I'm talking about. They're worth the money. And if you want to buy single instruments, you only pay 20 a pop, maybe less during sales. But if you want to buy all of them all at once to get rid of the pop upping, then uh, it's a bit much the first time you try it out, especially for most iOS music users, they probably wouldn't want to shell out that much in one go. However, in the end, we do because we get the app, we buy an instrument here and there, and in one or two years, we will have them all. That's usually how it goes. So yeah, I just wish there was a way to filter out the presets, maybe have a category in there called bundled factory presets. You select that and then you don't have to have these pop-ups. Yeah, that's the only thing that annoys me. Everything else in GeoShred is absolutely amazing and I can't recommend it enough. Now, finally, GeoShred does not support AUE3, but it does support interapp audio. Now there are actually more screenboard type apps out there and I'll just uh, start off a list here by mentioning a few and then you can fill out the rest in the comment section. So check out Bebot, very, very old app. It has a little robot, it animates when you play it and it also sounds like a theremin. And then if you want something with the synthesizer, with some rudimentary controls, go for Ribbon. And if you want an app that has a deep synth in there, then go for Shoe.
Those are just a few, but I'm sure that people in the audience will give you some other tips. So what are swipe drums? Well, there are two apps in particular we're going to be talking about in this section, and those are Drum Jam and Beat Surfing. But before we actually dive into the apps, I just want to explain the concept of beat surfing. Now, it is when you have a surface and the surface is filled with, let's say, hitboxes. These hitboxes contain some kind of a triggering system that triggers a sound. Now, there's also an internal clock going on in the background. And when you are triggering things, well, things are happening according to that clock. Now, even though both of these apps came out back in 2012 and beat surfing came before Drum Jam, we're going to have a look at Drum Jam first because the version of beat surfing that we're looking at in this episode, it didn't come out until all the way over here because they developed the idea further. Back in 2012, beat surfing was just a MIDI app, a very awesome MIDI app, but yeah, you had to connect it to other things. The current version of beat surfing doesn't require that. I also want to add that they're very different from one another, even though they allow you to surf beats. So Crash Course in Drum Jam. Quite frankly, it is a virtual band where you get to select all the instruments or how many band members you want. And then you also get to select the rhythm that they're playing that you can then jam along with. So this is your studio slash stage and you can select your instrument slash band members here in this list. Tap down, drag and drop it in here. You control how loud the band members play by dragging them up or down. So this is louder towards the front of the band and quieter towards the back of the band. And then you can spatially position them in the stereo field left or right. Now you can select a pattern for them to play over here and then down here in the sliding area where you get to do your finger surfing. Well, here is where you play whatever instrument you choose. And once you've got some stuff set up, you can play stuff like this. apps like these that, you know, they're bordering on being able to cure my depression. It is insane how much fun I'm having with them. Beat surfing like apps, they're very freeing to work with because they take something complex and they break it down and they make it accessible and easy and almost eliminates error from the equation. That could be a bad thing in itself and that's another discussion to have, but yeah, it is a fun concept to work with. You you have to try this stuff out. There is more we can talk about here because it has a lot of patterns, a lot of settings, a lot of instruments. However, I'm only going to be giving you this surface glance and basics into just getting going with this app because I think you can figure this one out for yourself. It is an older app, so of course it does not support AUV3, but it supports that good old format Indrap audio that no one remembers how to use anymore. So we're going to jump over to Beat Surfing 2, which is a beast when it comes to the Beat Surfing concept. 
Now, I did do a huge video on this app and I explained how it works back when it came out, but there have been two big changes since then. One, they have removed their subscription model and they've added a one-time purchase everything now price. So it's a freemium app. You download it for free, try it out. There's a lot to try out and then you can use the in-app purchase to get full access. Another thing that has changed is that there is now a way of recording your surfing on your screen. So you don't have a sequencer, you don't have a band backing you up, but you can record your motions and play that back. I never do though, because I like the fact that in here, I'm the band. When I stop, the music stops. And that's a technique you can use for adding nice pauses here and there. <laughs> Beat Surfing 2 takes the beat surfing concept and pushes it to the absolute maximum. It is mostly sample based, but there are some synthesis going on in here too. You have a bunch of instruments that you can choose from, and you basically just take an instrument and you drag it into your surface. And then you get a hitbox or multiple, depending on the instrument type. You can resize these hitboxes, you can have them locked to a grid, you can place them any way you want, you can have them intersect sect one another and just going across the whole screen. However, once you start really diving deep into what you can do in here, mm, stuff takes a little bit longer to do. For instance, there are a multitude of different types of instruments, and most of them are sample based, but some of them are synthesis based too. So there's a lot of settings that you can change to make different sounds. You have snare makers, bass drum makers, bass makers, hi-hat makers. There are instruments that will just switch out the sample every time you hit the box, making it so that you can cycle through samples when you're surfing. And there's even more because on the backside of the system, you have a modularity because you can cross connect hitboxes and instruments and have them affect one another. So you're playing a drum and then you're playing another drum. But when you're doing that, you're also switching the pitch for the bass, things like that. And once you start really diving into it, it becomes so deep that the learning curve also becomes a little bit steeper, especially with the modular stuff, because that stuff can get really tricky. Now there is a little bit of extra cream on the top here. Mm. And that is the fact that you can actually import your own images to use in the background. <laughs> It's how I made these two surfaces here. I basically made the designs for them in Affinity Designer and imported them into the app. And I love it when developers give the users tools like this to add visual stuff to their audio. It's just a nice creamy little detail. <laughs> So something I don't get to say very often is, yes, Beat Surfing 2 does support AUV3 on top 
of the standalone mode and interapp audio. In any case, both Thumb Jam and Beat Surfing 2 are extremely good apps. And if you're into this stuff or have never tried any of this type of surfing, well, you need to. Yeah, boy. So we have two apps to look at in this section, which is glitches and noise. However, for this section, I have to give out a photosensitivity warning because in the case of one of the apps, Hexaglyphics, well, it has a very blinky interface. And so if you are photosensitive, you should probably look away and I'll tell you when it's safe to look back. So Hexaglyphics Noise Generator, this one came out back in May 2015, got an update in August 2015, and then nothing ever since. And it doesn't look like the um, developer is active on iOS. I, I mean, I can't say for sure because a lot of developers, they simply start working for other companies. So they might still be on the App Store making apps, but just not under their own name. So this is one of those you might wanna go and buy and keep on your device because you don't want to miss out if it disappears soon. Now, the interface of this thing looks pretty esoterical and there are no real texts or labels or anything. And navigating this thing is quite confusing. So we're going to make it simple and do an overlay. So this thin strip here on the left is a filter control strip. The bigger surface here on the right is a noise and glitch generator. At the bottom here, we have a sub and sign generator. And then these boxes in the middle, they're basically mode selectors. Okay. What we have in front of us is a multi-touch instrument. There is no sequencing going on here or anything like that. It's just a surface for you to play. And if we zoom in to the upper right corner here and this big surface, then this is the noise and glitch generator. Now, this surface you can either tap or you can hold your finger on it. And you're controlling pitch in the x-axis while you're controlling amplitude in the y-axis. If you're using multiple fingers, then you can also create stuttering sounds. Finally, you have five different tone generators and you can switch between them on these five buttons here. Now, if we look on the left here, we have the filter strip and it actually has two filters. It's got a low pass filter and a high pass filter. And with just one finger, you can control the cutoff point for the low pass filter. Now, if you put two fingers on there, you're controlling two filters at the same time. And you can basically combine them to make a bandpass filter. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Now, there's a nice thing you can do with the filter where you can produce some snappy, zappy sounds by holding a finger and then tapping the other on the filter. The thing is that it will clip the output because these spikes that it creates are pretty loud. Moving on to the kick and sign generator. When you're tapping it, you're producing a kick sound. And when you're holding your finger down, you're producing a sine wave. And if you want to produce a sine wave without the kick, well, since you are controlling pitch with the x-axis and amplitude in the y-axis, you can just tap down and hold from the bottom of the surface and drag it upwards. And that way you can generate the sine wave without adding the kick on top. Right, so lastly, we have these three buttons over here. These are different mode selectors. And the first button here is a latch mode selector. With the first latch mode activated, every tap on screen is held for both generators and filters. And as soon as you activate latch mode, you'll have another button appear over here. And this is basically a latch mode clear button. So it will just clear out any latched stuff you might have. Now, there is a second latch mode in here, and it's a filter latch mode, so it only latches the filter. Now, the second button is a performance mode selector, and so the first mode is the normal mode, which is, well, it basically gives you the operation you've seen so far. Now, if you activate the second mode, it makes the generator produce short notes. And the third mode is a hybrid click and hold mode. So one finger produces a burst of noise and you're producing gated noise when you're using more than one finger. Now the third and last button is the channel mode selector. It has three modes and in the first one, it basically sets the output to mono. In the second mode, it makes the noise generator produce a noise in stereo. And in the third mode, it actually splits up the kick and sub on the right channel and the noise on the left channel. And believe it or not, but that's it. It looks esoterical, but it's really straightforward in its operation. And if you're into noises and glitches, you just have to get this one, especially before it disappears. I mean, it hasn't had an update in nine years. Who's to say that Apple won't do something weird so that the app just disappears suddenly? Yeah, make sure you get this one if you're into this stuff. Oh, and if you were wondering, no, Hexaglyphics does not support a UV3, of course, but it does support inter-app audio. Now, for those of you who are photosensitive and right now staring at a wall, you can look back onto your screens because we're going to move on to Vosis, but not the one that came out back in 2014. Yeah, that's right. It's an old app, but there is a newer version of it called Vosis Pro that gives you a lot more functions. And it came out back in 2022 and it was lastly updated in November 23. So the app is alive and well. Let me just add that if you don't want to shell out for the pro version, then you can always download the original version because it is free and test it out. But you will be limited because you won't have the option, for instance, to import videos to generate sound from. Yes, Vosis generates audio or sounds from pictures and video.
So how does Voces or Voces Pro work? Well, the App Store description kind of reads like word salad if you're not used to reading science papers. The audification of pixel luminance values creates shape timbre relationships. Okay. So when you're importing an image or a video, then it creates a grayscale out of that image. And then it reads the pixel luminance. And depending on how bright things are or dark things are, pixels in this case, it will change the timbre of the synth or the sound of the synth. So what I've been able to figure out since the engine is actually hidden to me, is that when I'm moving my squares, I can hear things happening. I can't explain exactly how the bright or dark pixels are changing the timbre. I am absolutely in love with Voces Pro and I'm hoping I can get more of you in love with it because if more buy it then maybe we'll see a Voces Pro 2 in the future. I want to see this concept being expanded. It's like having a mix between Borderlands Granular and a photo editor. Well, not really, but kind of. Because if you look at the controls here, you got image controls such as brightness, exposure, contrast, threshold, and then you have synth controls on top of it, like rates, a full ADSR envelope, an effect section with tremolo, you got reverb, and apart from just being able to load pictures and video, you can also use the cameras on your device, the front camera and the back camera. This allows you to work with a live feed. You can basically walk around town playing the town uh Now, when it comes to actually playing the surface in here and playing the images where you're placing down these squares that are sampling pixel brightness in an image, you can actually reshape them and you can also make them stick to the image by using the add function here. You have to try this out. Go get the free version, try it out. If you like it, go buy the pro version. And of course, neither Voces or Voces Pro supports AUV3, but they do both support intra-app audio. So what is a touch box? Well, it's basically a touch-based groove box. And yeah, when it comes to the immediacy of being able to be creative and make music with just one app, they're kind of at the top of their game. And let me just say from the beginning that none of these apps support AUV3, but they do all support inter-app audio. Now, two of these apps are clearly Groovebox-like apps. However, the third one, well, we could discuss whether it is a Groovebox app or not, but that's how I see it, and it is Sampler by Marcos Alonso. This is an app that came out all the way back in 2012, back when a lot of these really good touch-based apps came out. And it has received some updates over the years. Now, one of the biggest updates that came out for Sampler was back in 2020, and I did an entire video for it in where I go through the entire app and explain exactly how it works and show you some cool ways of making music with it. There's a little bonus in that video because it's a docutorial, so there is also parts of an interview I did with Marcos in that video. Link in the pinned comment. Years I live in San Francisco where I work for Apple, but I'm part of the uh, UI design team. So before that, I was a developer of Sampler, and before that, I was responsible for the interface of the design of the React world, which was a, like... Um... So I won't be going too deep into how Sampler works, but I will be skimming over its main features. 
Now, as the name suggests, it is a sample-based app. You can sample into it and you can import samples into it. And what it is that makes it so special are the various ways you have of actually playing back and manipulating samples. So first of all, we have six sample slots. In here, you can store short samples and long samples. Whatever you want to put in there, you can have in there. And then you have seven different sample playback modes that you can select for each slot. And you can really mix this up any way you want. You get to choose from slicer, looper, bow, tape plus scratch, arpeggiator, keyboard, and a loop player mode. And the cool thing here is that whatever you're doing in them, the way you're performing with each mode can be recorded and looped. Just remember, when you when do join, behave. Because if you said some doo-doo and... You see the color of the color of yellow. Now, thanks to these sample playback modes, it allows the user to do things that you've been able to do with some of the apps I've already shown in this video. And by the way, Sampler is multi-touch, so yeah, you can play stuff with polyphony, and that's not at all what polyphony means. It doesn't just mean playing a bunch of notes at the same time. And if you really want to know the history of the concept of polyphony and what it used to mean, where it comes from, you should really go and watch this video by Mark Doty. He really knows his stuff. And it's who I go to whenever I get a synth nerdism craving. Go subscribe to Automatic Gainsay on YouTube. Right. Um, where, where was I? Oh, sampler. Now, on top of all the sample playback stuff, you also have effects that you can put on top of the master bus. Now, like I mentioned earlier, I already have a huge video on Sampler that explains everything about it, and I'm not gonna dive deeper into Sampler. So here we have two apps. We've got Figure by Reason Studios Obia, formerly known as Propellerhead, and next to it we have Korg IK Oscillator. If we have a quick look at the timeline, we can see that Korg IK Oscillator came out back in 2011 and then Figure in 2012. And yeah, it's bunched up with a lot of other really, really good touch screen apps. It was a trend back then. Now, both of these apps have different ways of operating. However, both apps have been designed with instant music making in mind. So when you put down your finger on the screen, you get quantized playback of both beats and also pitch. In fact, it's very hard to do stuff wrong in here.
yeah, this quantized environment really helps that instant music as soon as I touch my screen. It really gives you a running start with any type of musical idea you might have. <laughs> And even though they're both limited to kind of like four on the floor kind of workflow, you can still work around the limitations of the apps and do music that isn't really four on the floor. You can turn quantization off, you can turn off scaling for pitch, and in the case of figure at least, you can get pretty wild with how you're controlling the sounds, because it does have way more sound control than what IK Oscillator has. Then again, IK Oscillator allows you to resample stuff, and that's pretty cool. You can actually import samples and loops into it, and that's something figure can't do. Now, even though you can import samples and loops into Korg IK Oscillator, the way you can use them is kind of limited. And so the absolute biggest limitation of both apps is that you cannot add more sounds to them. You can't add more synth sounds or really anything like that. So yeah, it's a huge limitation and it doesn't look as if the companies making these apps are gonna add a bunch of stuff to them anytime soon because there hasn't been that many updates. <laughs> So I urge you now, if you haven't tried these apps out yet, if you haven't gotten them and you might be interested in them, then get them now because if, they're, if they ever disappear, they're gone forever. Now I know that there are a lot of figure and IK oscillator users in the audience and you probably have more recommendations for all the people reading in the comment section down there. And if you have any recommendations for any of the type of apps I've shown in this video that are touch instruments, then go ahead, just go wild in the comment section. I'm gonna round this video off by talking about an app I didn't include. And the reason to why I didn't include it is because if I did, I would have had to include a hundred other apps or a thousand other apps. You see, all of the apps on this platform, whether they're photo editors, video editors, texting apps, messaging apps, or music apps, they're all touch screen apps. But touch screen instruments is something specific. And what I've shown you in this video so far are all of the ones that I find are the best at this game. 
if we take the obvious ones like Borderlands, Granular, TC11 and Gesturement, you can look at them and you can instantly see what I'm talking about. The main design philosophy behind these apps are basically turn the screen into an instrument. That's it. However, over at our Discord channel, where you should join up, link in the description and in the pinned comment, well, one of the members or multiple of the Discord members mentioned Animog Z. Well, here we're getting close to opening a can of worms. I don't know if that's the right term for it, but yeah, I don't want to open a can of worms because I don't much care for canned worms. I like them, you know, in the dirt where they can eat stuff and poop and make great soil so that I get to grow vegetables and where was I? Oh right, so Animoxy is definitely a synthesizer plugin. It can run in a standalone mode and it does have a great keyboard in there with various modes and some of them can be considered made for touch and gestures and things like that. And on top of it, it also has the anisotropic synth engine that gives you a very unique interface to work with. And there are even artists out there using Animoog Z live on stage, just like a touch screen instrument. And in this case, I agree with my Discord members, but it scared me because if I add Animoog Z to the lineup of apps in this video, then the video would become 10 hours long because I could add a hundred apps here, a thousand apps. You know, there are apps like something like Voltaire, for instance. There is even a button here that allows you to press it and fill out the entire screen with a keyboard. Look at that, it's a screen board app now. And it gets even better when you add MPE on top of it. And now there are worms crawling all over the desk and I don't even remember opening the can, but that's the thing, right? That ruins the whole thing with the concept I'm trying to do for this video, so shut up. Hey, slow down, calm down, keep your pants on. I would never tell my Discord members to shut up. No, it's a safe space for us to talk about everything about music, and I even have some off-topic stuff. And I mean, if you want to join up and see my progress with me building my own Eurac system, you can see that in there. It's all in there, you know? It's a great space and it's all being made possible thanks to all of my wonderful Discord members. Just remember, when you do join, behave. Because if you said some doo-doo and you see the color of yellow popping in, then um, our Terminally Online mod will severely punish you. Imagine Gandalf fighting the Balrog uh, wearing just thong and suspenders. Finally, what are your most favorite um, touch instrument apps on iOS? Maybe you don't have any. Maybe you don't subscribe to the concept of touch instrument apps. I don't know. Well, just discuss it down below in the comment section. And in the meantime, I wish you a very productive week. Now go finger all of your stuff and have a lot of fun doing it.